Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the R4DS uh, all book club online learning community. So today we'll be discussing uh, uh, chapter 24 for the R4 data science book that we're reading so far. So this chapter is all about uh, hierarchical data. And uh, for the learning objective, uh, we are going to learn about uh, data wrangling using the uh, the honest longer and also the honest uh, wider uh, function from tidy R. So these two new functions uh, is still under active uh, development. Uh, these are new functions in which they just added uh, to the to the tidy R package. So also we are also going to look at uh, learn about how we are going to work uh, with different type of uh, list data. So those are basically what we'll be covering uh, in this uh, chapter, which is chapter 24. So I think in the first uh, part, uh, this mainly talk about uh, uh, that we are going to see how we can, we are going to uh, handle uh, uh, data re rectangling uh, using uh, these two these two key functions in which I mentioned earlier on the the honest longer function which is going to uh, which is uh, likely similar which is similar to the Python longer and honest uh, wider which is going to spread those data into multiple columns for us. So for the but for the prerequisite. We need to load the tidyverse. We need to also load uh, repulsive because re this repulsive is a package that contains a different type of list data set, which which are always in the form of list hierarchical, in which we will be using uh, for for our example. So we also load uh, JSON lights because we will need in some uh, JSON file in this process. So in the first example. We have a list of number, which is from one to four. We also have a character. We also have true. Just as we know, uh, a a list, a list of a list within a, within a list, we can store different type of objects in a list, which is not possible when we are working with vector matrix. So when we when we have different type of objects. And we want a more consistent way in which we can store it in R. So we can just use a list. So we pass, this is numeric, this is character, this is logical. So we are saving this in the object uh, called X1. Uh, so when we print X1, we can see that the first index, which is a number from one to four, which is what we have here. Uh, the second index, which is character A, the third index, uh, which is uh, logical, which shows uh, true. So uh, that is just basically what we have there. We are, they also give some other example, which is also a list A, which is one to two, then B, which is one to three, and C, which is one to four. So when we print uh, X2, it shows index, uh, index A, which contains a number of one to two, uh, index B, we have one to three. Uh, index C, we have uh, one to four. Then when we look at the structure of the first list, uh, it shows this is an integer of number that range between one to four. The first, second, we have character. We also have a uh, logical. So if you look at the structure of the object X2, uh, which shows this is an integer, this is an integer. And this is also an integer. So uh, feel free to stop me at any point uh, in case there is anything that is not clear so that I can come back to it. No, I think that's OK so far. Thank you. OK, so I think for the next part, uh, yeah, we are looking at the hierarchy because uh, uh, this one is a list, deeply nested list, which is a deeply nested list. So we want to look at the Hierarchy here, we have list. Within the list, we also have another list, which of number one to two, we also have another list of number uh, three uh, to four. So when we look at the structure of this X3, it shows we have list of two because this is a 
object two, uh, which is number one and also number two. We also have this, which is a list of two. It shows that it's, we have number three and also, uh, also uh, number four. So if we want to create, we can also do this achieve the same thing using the C, which is for uh, the character vector. So we, we have one to two, we also have uh, three and four, which shows that the first index we have one, two, three, four. And when we have, uh, when we have, when we have a list of objects, we have one and two, we also have list three and four. So when we look at the structure of the object, uh, X4, it shows this is a list of four, number one, number two, okay. number three, and also uh, number four. So here we have a deeply nested list. Also this one, we have one, this one we have list of two lists. We also have three lists and we also have four. Then list, we also have five. So when we look at the structure of X5, it shows that we have list of two. Then it shows us all the hierarchy of objects. So, but we can look at, we can view this uh, within our our studio environment. It shows that X5, we have list of two, length of two. Then it gave us uh, the indexing, which is a double square uh, bracket in which uh, we can use to, to index uh, the links to assess of, uh, the items in which we are storing uh, in those lists. So in this example, we have list column, which is a data frame. We are calling a table function. We have X, which is one and two. We have Y, which is A and B. We have Z, which is list of lists, where we have one and two. List, we have three, four, five. So when we now print uh, that table, we print the data frame. Uh, it shows a table of two by three, means that we have uh, two, two rows, but three column, because we have column X, Y and Z, two by three. So we have column X, we have column Y, we have column Z. This is row one, and also this is uh, row two. So we can also uh, we can also perform filter our filter operation within uh, this nested list where we have DF, and then we filter X is equals to one. So it's just going to return those row. Uh, where the, that condition is true. So it's, it's, it's also going to work within uh, the list. We just say DF, which is uh, the object in which we have created uh, here. So we just call the DF and then we say filter where we have X uh, is equals to one, then it's going to uh, return uh, that output uh, for us. They also uh, discuss on how we can unnest uh, this list back to a data frame. So we have a DF1, which is a triple, uh, which is a row-wise data frame. We have X and we have Y. So for row one, we say list of A is equals to 11, B is equals to 12. Row two, we have a list, A is 21, B is 22. Row three, we say list, A is 31 and B uh, is 32. We also have DF2, which is uh, something similar uh, to DF1. So in this case, we'll be seeing how we can use uh, this, uh, we'll see how we'll use this uh, two key function, the unnest uh, longer, and also, and also the unnest uh, wider function. We will see how we will play around with this uh, two function in which I put in the chart, and we see how we're going to use it uh, to wrangle this that this data set we are working with. Here we have DF1, and then we set on next a uh, wider by Y. So if we are not really sure what uh, the on next uh, is doing, we can just come back uh, here to the our studio, say library. 
coming. Library, I think we have Tidyverse. We can have on Nest, uh, on Nest Longer. We can have on Nest Longer, I say on Nest Longer turns each element of a list column into a row, into a row. It is most naturally suited by so list column where the element are name and the length of each element varies row to row. So we also have uh, on Nest Wider, on Nest. We also have on Nest Wider and we also have on Nest Auto, but on Nest Auto is just going to automatically make that uh, detection and it's going to arrange the on Nest Wider. And we also have on Nest Longer, which is the opposite uh, of the uh, on Nest uh, Wider. So we just pass this column Y, so it's just going to arrange all those data. We have X, we have A, we have B. Uh, this is row one, one, 11, and 12. This is for row two, two, 21, and uh, 22. So this uh, function is still under uh, active uh, development, is still in the development uh, version. Uh, it's still under active development. They are still improving. The working on the function. Here we have DF1, and then we have on this wider Y. Then we are using name set is equals to underscore, which is going, to, which is very useful because it's going to show Y underscore A. It shows that these values are coming from uh, uh, from row A. We have Y underscore B, where we have 12, uh, 22, and 32. Uh, because the name set will help us to know where uh, those values in which we are on nesting, in which we are pivoting or nesting into a wider, we'll know where those values are. Uh, they were initially where they are coming from like this. It's calling, coming from row A, where we have, uh, where we have A, where do we have A? Because these are for A, this is also for A, this is also for A. So we are going to know where uh, those uh, data, where they are coming from. So the opposite of the onness wider is uh, the onness longer. This is just similar to our pivot longer function in which uh, we are used to. Here we have DF2 and then we have onness longer by Y. So this is just going to pivot it in a long format. So it's going to be in a long format. We can also have uh, DF6, which is also another data frame. See, triple X and Y. So we have A, which is a list of one and two. We have B, which is a list containing three. C, which is an empty list. Then we have DF6, and then we said on less longer by Y. It's still going to do everything. So it's one, two, and also three. Okay, so I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed. Just on that unless longer then, on that last one, DF6, because there was nothing in that list for C, you basically just don't get a, a row for it at all. Yeah, it just, it just forgets about any null values. Yes, 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 yeah. because this is an empty list. So in the yeah. final output, we will not get anything there. So yeah. it's empty because we have one, two, so which is here one, two, and we also have three, which is here three. So this is an empty list. So we are not going to get any output. Yeah, you lose the value of X basically, don't you? Because you've got null in Y. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's and null. So there are some times in which we are working with our data frame, we have some inconsistency types. So like here we have the F4, which is also a triple. We have X and Y. Uh, here we have A, which is a list of one. We have B, which is a list of A. Then we also have true and also we have five. Okay, so in this B, we can see we are having both character. We are having both logical. We are having both uh, numbers. So we have the F4 
and then we say unless longer by was. So when we have inconsistency type, so how, how is this function going to deal with this? So it's just going to say, okay, this is A, which is a, a, a list of what's one, which is double. And because here we have one object, then here we have B, which is, this is B, which is a, which is a character. In that character, we have one or item. Then this is also B. We have logical, which is what we have here. And we have one item. This is also B and we have double, which is uh, one item here. So it's just going to automatically detect and put everything back into a separate uh, list, uh, which is uh, very, uh, very uh, useful. Yeah. Just to go back to that one, all your family, if yes. you, so if you have, say, say the first item was also a double, would it still split them up or would it say it's got two doubles, you know, because you've got the logical in between them? Okay, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so you said if I put a, is that what you mean? Yeah, that, exactly. Okay, so if I run this, okay, so we put on this longer. Okay, so the first item here we have A, which is a list of one. Uh, we can see that here is a list of one. The second item B, uh, we have four. Okay, so which is double. Yeah. So we have one item there. The next item is B, which is A, which is character. We can see that here. The third item is logical, which is true. We can see that here. And this other one, we have double, uh, which we can see here. So yeah. is, the function is goes, uh, automatically is just going to detect and it's going to arrange everything uh, in that format. Yeah. Okay, so, so there are also some other functions. On Nest Auto, and uh, this one is very useful because it automatically picks between on less longer and on less wider. I mean, when we are not sure if we are going to use on less longer or on less wider, we can use uh, the on less auto. It's going to automatically detect uh, the right formats. Then it's going to arrange uh, pivot the database on the structure of the list. So let's try that with what we are, uh, I, the example I just did now. We have BF4, and then we said on nest, on nest auto by Y. We can see the body is also going to give us a warning that using on nest longer Y in, in indices include equals for no element as name. So it's just going to automatically detect and it's going to arrange the data based on what we have here in our honest longer. You can see A, B, 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 B. And when we use honest auto, it's just, it's going to automatically detect, maybe if we are not sure, uh, should I use honest uh, longer or should I use honest wider? So it's better we can use uh, honest auto just based on how they explain in the books. We also have the honest, which expand both rows and column. It is useful when you are you have a list column that contains a 2D structure like a data frame, which you don't see in this book, but you, we might encounter that uh, when we are working with the tidy model ecosystem. I think uh, there is also a book club in which I also participate. Uh, the tidy model, and there we work with a lot of lists. Uh, there we can we can see how we can use this on nest to unnest those list item back uh, to, to 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 data frame. So okay, this other part talk about uh, very wide data. So how do we deal uh, with uh, a very wide data set? So this is a table uh, uh, which is GS repos. We are we were reading this uh, table. We are reading this data uh, from a GitHub repository. So we call it repos. We can see it's a table 
of six rows and one column. The column name is JSON. So this is the first list, 30 item, also a list, also a list, also a list, also a list. Okay. So if we say repos, then we use on next longer, then we pass in the JSON. Okay, so when we pass in the JSON, uh, let's see this. Let me grab this, go to our studio, uh, because I want to try another thing. Library, JSON, JSON lights. Okay, so that, oops. Uh, library repulsive. Okay, so this is a list, okay. So we have this. Okay, so when we have this, we can also say repos. Maybe if we are not sure which function to use, we can just say on nest auto, then the column, we want to pass this to be JSON. Okay, we can see that we get the same outputs. So if we are not sure of which one to use, we can just use our normal on nest auto, which is a new function. We're still going to get uh, the same output. Uh, so in this case, we have repos, and then we said, on nest longer, we pass in the column is JSON. And then we said on nest wider, still JSON. This on nest wider is going to spread those lists into multiple column. Here we now see that we have ID, we have name, we have full name, we have the owner of the GitHub repository, we have, is it a private or not? HTML URL, description, fork, and also uh, the URL. We can see that this is a GitHub repository in which uh, we read into R. We also have the repos, and then we have on nest longer passing the column, which is JSON. And then we said on nest wider, we still passing the JSON file. And then we said names, which is going to give us all the column name. And then we have to say head. Then we just need to see the first 10 name. This is number six, seven, eight, nine and also 10, because this one is very difficult uh, for us to see all the column headers here. It's very difficult. But when we use uh, this approach, we can inspect uh, the first 10 column headers. Then we can now uh, proceed uh, to, uh, to look at some interesting future. Here we have repos, and then we said on this longer, we pass in the JSON, and then uh, on this wider, we also pass in the JSON and then we select, which we are going to select for a specific column, ID, full name, and also a description. So when we select that, we can see that these are the column in which uh, we selected. Uh, and then we can also do this same example. After the selection, we said on this wider again, we want to, the column we want to on this, into a wider, we say the owner, then we say name set, should separate the names uh, with underscore. So we have full name, owner login, owner ID, owner avatar URL. Uh, okay, I think uh, that is all for this section. I don't know if there are any comment for the very wide data, how we deal with, with the very wide data before we go. Uh, into the next part. No, I think that's okay. Okay. So uh, how do we deal with uh, relational data? So here we have table, we have JSON, which is got, uh, got charts. Then we call the charts, which is a table JSON. Uh, and this is a nested list, a deeply nested list. So we have charts. And then we said on nest wider, uh, the JSON, uh, this is just going to on nest, it's going to spread it 
into multiple uh, columns. So it's going to increase the number of columns. So uh, the charts, then we said on this wider JSON, then we select uh, for some specific columns and then we call the charts again. When we call the charts, we can see that we have ID, we have name, we have gender, we have culture, we have born, we have died and also uh, alive. So this data set, uh, it also contain uh, many list columns. So how can we see that we can select ID, then we also say where is the list. So we, we can select ID and also we pass in a condition where is the list, which is, uh, is going to select, this is a ID, this is a title, which is, we can see it's a list. Uh, we have aliases, this is also a list. Uh, we have allegiances, which is also a list. We have books, which is a list. Uh, this is also, these are all list uh, column. Uh, so we want to explore the title. So we have Charles, we have Ones Wider, which is JSON, and then we select ID and title, and then we have Ones Longer, which is also the title. So when we have on this longer, uh, the title, we have ID and also title. So we have this integer, this is character. These are all the ID. These are all the title of those characters in which uh, we are seen. We also have the, the character. So we have uh, on this wider, we pass in the column, which is JSON, and then we select ID and also title, so we also on next longer uh, by title, then we filter where we have title that is not equals to string. So we want all the title that is not equal to string, empty string, and then uh, we rename title is equals to titles, then we call the titles, which is this object. So once we call it, we can see that we have ID, which is integer. We also have title, which is character. So these are just basically uh, data wrangling using tidy R and also the, some fuel of uh, deploy R code because this is coming from deploy R. This is also coming from deploy R. This is also coming from deploy R. So this mainly talk about uh, deeply nested lists. We have GMAP cities. Within GMAP cities, uh, we just print that object. Then we say GMAP cities, and then on this wider, uh, this column, we want to spread this column into multi this list column into multiple column. We pass in JSON. So when we do that, we can see that we have city, we have results, we also have status. Then we have uh, GMAP cities, and then on this wider, we pass in the JSON file, and then we select we select all the column except uh, the status. Then we have on this longer again. Uh, we on this uh, this results column. We need to unnest it again so that we can see uh, uh, what is there. So we can see that this is results. It's a name list, name list, name list. Now result is a name list, so we need to use uh, on this uh, wider to view uh, the results. So when we now on this wider on the results, we can we will save in a new object called location. So when we print uh, the locations, we can now see we have address, uh, which is address component, which is also a list. But we can also on this this again. We have formatted address. This are them. We have geometry, which is a name list. We can still unnest this column. We have place ID, which is a character. We also have types, which is a list. So, so in this case, we have locations. So we select so for some specific column. Then we have on this wider uh, the geometry. So when we on next wider on the geometry, uh, we can see uh, we can see that we have. Houston, Houston, Texas, USA. Uh, so yeah, 
we have, we selected for some specific column on less wider on geometry and also on less wider on location. So when we do that, we can see we have city formatted address bounds. We have latitude and longitude, which is our geometry, then location, approximate, 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 then but the viewport is still a name list. So all these other lists, we can skip on, on nesting them until we can see, be able to assess all the values that are in that uh, name list. So we can keep on on nesting until we get to the, uh, what we are looking for here. We have location, uh, we select for some specific column. We still use on this wider on geometry, and then we select, we are negating this column that start for between location and viewport, we, we don't need them. And then we have to on this wider on the bounds. So when we on this wider on the bounds, we say this is city, this is formatted address, this is the northeast, this is also uh, the southeast. So we can all, we also see here, we select city, uh, formatted address and also geometry. So then we now say uh, on this wider, we are nest all the geometry in that uh, data frame. Then we are selecting, within select, we are negating uh, this column that start within uh, location to viewport, we are negating them. Uh, we don't want to select those column. That is why I put this symbol in front. Then I said on this wider on the bounds, then I select, then I rename, not east should, be, I rename it to NE, then Southwest, I put it as SW and we can see. Uh, then I said on this wider again, and which column? I select Northeast and Southwest. Then I say name set, I should separate it uh, with underscore. So that is where we have uh, Northeast longitude, Southwest latitude, Southwest longitude. So because of we put the name set, that we should separate uh, all the names uh, should be separated uh, with underscore. So in this case, I think they, they make use of a new function from Tadia, which is about the hoist function. So we, uh, we call location and then we select city, formatted address and, and, and geometry, and then the hoist, the geometry where you have name lats, which is bounds, not is and latitude. Southwest lats, it should be this. Not is longitude, we have this. Southwest longitude, we have these three columns. So when we execute uh, this, we are going to get uh, this uh, uh, output. So I think the oist, uh, you might be asking, uh, what is the oist? doing, we can just look at that function. We can see that the hoist function is coming from tidy R. Hoist allows you to selectively pull components of a list column into their own top level column using the same syntax as pull block. So it's still using the pull syntax. So it's up us to selectively pull those component of a list column into their own uh, top uh, level, because you can see here we have several list column. We want to put pull them down into their own uh, uh, list column. And we can see we have name list of four, because here we have, uh, we have bounds, not east and latitude, bounds, southwest and latitude. Okay, so this one is about uh, the JSON, which is short for Java Script Object Notation and is, is the way that most web API return uh, data. It is important to understand it because while JSON and all data types are pretty similar, there isn't a perfect one-to-one -one mapping. So it is good to understand a bit about JSON because uh, this is just about how the web API work, like our normal uh, browser, how it sends and receives uh, data. So the various data types, the simplest type is a null, 
which plays uh, plays the same role as the NA in R. It represents the absence uh, of data. So when we have null, so we know that it is NA, we have no data in that case. We also have a string. It's much like a string in R, but almost always use a double quote. We also have a number is similar to R number. They can use integer, which is one, two, three, decimal, which is one, two, three point four five or scientific, which is 1.23 E3. We also have a Boolean is similar to R, which is like a true and false, but uses a lowercase uh, true and false because R uses uppercase, uh, but the JSON use a uh, lowercase, either true uh, or false. So those are the two uh, differences there. Yeah, we have GitHub user, JSON, okay, which is our path we have defined. So when we look at that, we can see that we, this is from my user, my app data on my machine, local R Windows library. It shows that I have R 4.3 within the repulsive extension data. Then we have the GitHub users got the song. Then we need to read, we need to read that JSON in. GitHub users JSON, we read it and save it in this object. Then we look at identical, which, was, which, is, which is check uh, data we are using previously. We have GitHub users and GitHub users too. So we want to check if these two data set are identical, it shows true. These two data sets are, are identical. We can use STR. Within the STR, we say pass JSON one. We say the first item is integer of number one. We have str pass JSON. We have one, two, and three. It shows a list of three, integer one, integer two, and also integer three. We, we also have str pass JSON. We have x, we have one, two, and three. We have x, which is a list of three integer one, integer two, and also integer, uh, and also integer three. So that is just that on how we can easily use uh, JSON uh, to play around uh, with our data. Then starting the rectangling process. So we have a JSON file. Uh, here we have name, JSON, a John H 34 name, Susan, age is 27. We have DF, which is a table. We have JSON. Then we say pass underscore JSON. We pass in this uh, JSON file. Then we print the DF. So we, can, we have seen that we can have a JSON file. We can convert this JSON file into an R object, which is a list object. It shows that this is a table of two rows, one column, JSON, which is this a name list. This is also a name list of two uh, of two items. So we can now say DF, and then we set on this wider the JSON. So it's just going to spread it. We have name, we have age, this character, this integer, John is age 34. Uh, Susan is age is 27. So we can also have another JSON file. We can do the same thing. We use table, JSON, list, pass JSON, pass in the JSON file. Then we print the DF, which is going to show us that this is a, a list. Then we can now use on nest, on nest wider on the JSON and also results and on nest wider on the results. So when we do that, we are going to get a table back from that JSON file in which uh, we read in Initially, we can also have pass JSON, dollars and results, which we save in a new object called DF. And then we say DF and then on next wider on the results. So it's going to give us, this is name, this is age. We have John, his age is 34. We have Susan, his age is uh, uh, 27. So this is just basically how uh, we can play around uh, with the uh, with the JSON uh, file 
uh, in us. So basically what we are we're able to see today, we have seen how uh, we can work with erotical data in R, how we can uh, work with the deeply nested list using these two uh, new function we, which we just learned, the unness wider and also unness longer or alongside with the unness auto. We, we also saw how we can work with uh, the JSON file, how we can work with in, read in those JSON file, convert it into list, then unless those lists back uh, to give us a uh, data frame. So that is just basically all about uh, this chapter. I don't know if there are any questions or further or comments on what we discussed today. I'm good. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you, all your family. Okay, so.